9 to 10, Final Nights. While originally this number was meant to be the Woolies Wonderland fan game, I couldn't find any information on it, and nobody who played this game included links in their description. Yet if we don't put a link to something we play, everyone flips out on us. No matter the double standard, Final Nights is much more fitting game for this list. The Final Nights series as a whole is pretty inventive. Starting off the series with Mike Schmidt fleeing the FNAF 1 pizzeria after it's losing power, but it being followed by a mysterious entity that escaped from Freddy called the Brother, and then escalates from there, eventually adding the Reaper animatronics and the mechanics of actually having to sleep to pass time in FNAF 3, ironically the same game the Reapers are introduced. The animatronics are scary, the story is scary, and it's all honestly more disturbing than the original game, and I think that's something that we can all appreciate. And at 9, Before the Good Memory. Before the Good Memory is a FNAF fan game made by Game Jolt user Mr. Rybizzle. In this game you play as Richard, who is working at Fredbear's Family Diner working to save up money to go to Junior's for his son's birthday. I'm assuming that it's the Junior's from Midnight Motorist. But as the Game Jolt page puts it, it doesn't go good. The only two animatronics in the game are Spring Bonnie and Golden Spring Freddy, aptly named Fredbear, because, you know, it's Fredbear. But features helping on the office desk, which I don't think would happen, but hey, whatever, it's a fan game. After entering the office in the Spring Room Diner, the player activates the animatronics that will begin free roaming and will charge at the player when seen. But you can lean around corners and turn your flashlight off to minimize your visibility. The game is definitely an interesting one and a different take on gameplay, and the sound design is good as well, making the jump scares really hit. In at 8, The Twisted Carnival. When five children are mysteriously found dead unexplainably after a ride on a Ferris wheel, it's obvious that something strange is happening, and the secrets must be uncovered. Working as a night guard at King's Carnival has its perks, like getting unfettered access to the park during the day, but during work hours, expect to spend long nights fending off Bear Hug and his gang of mechanical husks as you plunge deeper into the darkness of the Twisted Carnival. Can you solve the mystery? The Twisted Carnival is made by Game Jolt user Galva underscore and includes everything you love about a FNAF game. Multiple angles, a big door, or in this case a window, mini games, and terrifying animatronics. There is currently only a demo available, but nonetheless these animatronics are hella spooky. With characters like Foxtrot, Bonzo, Bear Hug, Chixie, and question mark, question mark, question mark, there is bound to be plenty of horror come the full game release. And I'm looking forward to it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not, I'm certainly not going to be playing it, but others will. And it's Seven Babies Nightmare Circus. This time, you've gotten lost in your mind. You're trapped, unable to wake and remember. Best guess is to defend yourself in your dreadful sleep. Use your flashlight to ward off unwanted creatures. Venture to tents to explore. Find a way out. Created by Mixless on Game Jolt, this is probably the scariest FNAF fan game based on Baby and the Funtime animatronics from what I've seen. These things are messed up and the story will send shivers down your already shaking spine just from looking at these screenshots. If you love Sister Location and the Funtime animatronics, take this game for a spin, because it's basically the Dark Carnival before the Dark Carnival was a real thing. It's great. It's also ironic that I'm saying about this one and not the Twisted Carnival, but that's twisted, not dark. And it's 6, Twisted Reality. Created by Game Jolt user PanPie, Twisted Reality is based on the second novel of the official FNAF series, The Twisted Ones, but is featuring other fan-made animatronics such as Twisted Fredbear instead of the official Twisted animatronics. The game was cancelled as the developer lost interest in the game, however, he is now currently making a reboot of the game called Twisted Reality Returns. The game takes place in Fazbear's Frightening Museum, where you're the, you guessed it, night guard who has to defend themselves from the dangerous Twisted animatronics buried underground, but during the day, while they may not come out, they still track you. The game currently has three animatronics, and the player must use different ways to defend themselves. The player has a TV and a security monitor. While TV is used to check on infected Freddies, the player can use the security monitor to check on Twisted Fredbear. The power supply is limited, so the player must make sure to shut off their TV to cool down the generators. There is also a flamethrower feature in camera 3B in the monitor as well. This can be used to ward off any attackers because, you know, it's fire. And the Twisted Animatronics are some of the most terrifying ones that we've been described, so it's bound to be fun. Halfway through in at number 5, Golden Memory. Golden Memory, now Golden Memory Remastered, is a fan game created by Game Jolt user Wester and features some damn good graphics from what I've been seeing. So if that's your cup of tea, I'd suggest that game for you. The game takes place at Fredbear's Family Diner in 1983 and features four animatronics. Spring Bonnie, Fredbear, Freddy and Bonnie, all with different mechanics, but also similar to send away. The jump scares are scary and while the gameplay is simple, with animatronics appearing in your office and you needing to click a button to make them go away, when they do appear in your office, it's terrifying. Trust me, play it for yourself and you'll end up sh**ing. 
yourself. But yeah, play it for yourself. I'm not doing it. In it for Pork Chops Horror Show. Created by Game Jolt user Fiznom, who is the one developing FNAF Plus as part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, Pork Chops Horror Show is a mix of free roam point and click horror with the classic FNAF survival thrown in there to spice things up. Welcome, dear contestant, to the experience of a lifetime inside the reinforced walls of Pork Chops Horror Show, where the brave and mentally unstable alike come to throw their lives away for the promise of money, prizes, and fame. Relatable. Survive the winding corridors of the haunted meat factory where our mechanical but monotonous Maniacal friend Porkchop will hunt you down and make you wish your death were as quick and painless as a simple jump scare. However, the game is currently on hold since they're prioritizing FNAF Plus, which is understandable, but nevertheless, this looks horrifying, and if you want a taste, you can play Porkchop's Adventure, which is a separate game troll game. But it's still by Fizzno. In at 3, Five Nights at Fred Bear's 3. Welcome to Fred Bear's Family Diner, also known as William's Restaurant, a new pizzeria burger restaurant based off the old Fred Bear's Family Diner and Fred Bear and Friends. You work as a security guard from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. and fend off animatronics for five nights. Not only that, you have to stay until 7 a.m. to conduct repairs on the animatronics, too. You have five days until the party, so let's get ready. Five Nights at Fred Bear's 3 is getting a free roam remaster coming soon, and the game currently has a demo available as well and features your favorite killer animatronics and more, with new infected variants on the originals from what I've seen in gameplay videos. At least, if they weren't lying. The game is being made by Jordan is Great 505, which pains me to say because that's my sister's name, on Game Jolt, and the demo was released six months ago, but they still post regularly on Game Jolt, link on their Game Jolt page, so you can follow them if you'd like updates. The game looks absolutely horrific and wonderful, but again, I'm not gonna play it. You can. Penultimate lean at number two, Dormitibus. Dormitibus is a fan game that was developed by Blackout, Own Trick, Steven Mater, and Super Arthur Bros. Faced with dangerous robotic abominations, the player has to survive 10 nights of terror and panic. The only thing that you're given to defend yourself is an old dusty desktop computer and your own reflexes. The player is challenged by a whole horde of robotic monstrosities who, ironically enough, used to be the protagonist's friends. This game is absolutely nuts. And the story is some of the darkest sh that I've seen. The game was made before the release of FNAF 4, so only includes details from the first three games, but it only needs those. Jesus Christ, if you're into some f***ed up sh then play this game. Because there is gore galore, okay? With animatronics constantly showing decaying muscle and blood and the, the muscles like stretch, oh my god. If you've seen any of the alternate animatronic lists on this channel, then you'll have seen the Havoc animatronics or Garvey, this game's version of Springtrap, and just, dear god, this was also made before the William Apton name reveal. So there are a lot of things that are different to the main series, if that's what you're into. It's messed up. It's it it's hella messed up, man. I'm telling you. Finally, in at number one, the joy of creation. While Dormitibus may be disturbing, nothing can be as scary as the joy of creation. Both the free roam and story modes are horrifying. Created by Nixon on Game Joel, it's no wonder why this game was added to the Fazbear fanverse. It's the night of August 8th, 2016, and Five Nights at Freddy's second anniversary has passed. Celebrated worldwide, the hit indie horror series and its creator have made themselves a place in modern culture and the hearts of many. In this game, you play through the eyes of Scott Cawthon and his family, as they try to survive in inside their own home on the dreadful night that brought the horror into reality. The scorched beings whose origin and motives are yet unknown find secrets lurking in the house and uncover the mysterious events that led to the cancellation of the next game in the series. You play in our world up against ignited versions of our favorite animatronics. How is that not terrifying? You'll be in for a treat when playing this game. Each level has its own gameplay type, so it's not the same thing every night, and it's it's incredible. If you haven't played it, I highly suggest that you do. I haven't played it, but I've watched it. it just, the fact that it's in our world just makes it so messed up. And you're playing as Scott, and now he announced his retirement, which only makes this more real. <laughs> and it's not okay. Number 10, Super FNAF 2, Wonderful Day. This game honestly looks like just a lot of fun. It's been in development since 2017 and is a platformer with lots of dark, hidden secrets for you to uncover. The trailer spins it as a game created kind of by Fazbear Entertainment to promote their franchises who teamed up with obviously the company LSF Development to actually make the game. LSF Development is the actual creator of the game on Game Jolt. There is no 
expected release date, but the creators are hoping to have it ready soon. At least that's what their page says. I love that it appears as a legit 80s or 90s inspired platformer, but that there are also some dark secrets via perhaps glitches that will likely come up in regards to the true stories behind the restaurants and the animatronics. I also just love that it takes its name from Circus Baby's speech about her wonderful day. I see what you did there, and I like it. Number 9, Five Nights at McDonald's. This was one of, if not the FNAF game to enter development first. This was one of the first, if not the first FNAF fan game to enter development development. We're not really sure how far along this game is, but we know it's been in the works for apparently seven years. The graphics make it look like something that could be released for like Nintendo 64. But hey, Nintendo 64 is well loved by many of us, so that might not end up being a bad thing if it ever actually does get finished. All we have to look at is some very blocky designs for characters and locations. Oh, and a live trailer that is admittedly pretty creepy, but also is live action, so it's more about giving us the feel for this game than any actual idea of what the game would be like to play. Five Nights at McDonald's is being created by Vortex Softworks, and you can follow along on the journey on Game Jolt. It's also just a cool one to be aware of and to follow since it was, you know, apparently like the first one. It's like a bit of uh, FNAF history. FNAF fan made history. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists like it, be sure to show us by giving this video a thumbs up. I love talking about all the cool fan made stuff because the community is just so cool and creative and I love it. So yeah, if you want more fan made content, let us know we can celebrate it. Number eight, Fred Bears The Origin slash FNAF. Fred Bears is a game that was meant to establish the lore as reimagined by fans of the first Freddy's location. Fred Bear's Diner. It's implied based on teaser trailers and the description that you, in fact, may play as the killer in the series, but that at least for a time you're kind of unaware as to if you're responsible for any deaths or if something else might be going on. All in all, it sounds very creepy and mysterious and a little confusing for this story, which I am into. I mean, if I didn't want confusing, would I even be talking about FNAF right now? However, this game seems to have been in development since 2015 and doesn't offer too much in terms of giving us glimpses into what could be upcoming gameplay. Fred Bears is being developed by Copal Images, if it's still being developed. Our last little bit of intel was an opening scene still, which was shared one year ago on the Game Jolt page for this game. Number 7, Five Nights at Freddy's Laughter and Joy. And we'll laugh and laugh and laugh. This game looks like it has a promising premise from the description, but it will likely never see the light of day or the darkness of night, as it's been in development since 2014. There also isn't much content on its Game Jolt page to suggest that it is anywhere close to being ready or that it has even been continually worked on since it was announced. What we do have is a plot that involves worldwide locations of Freddy's being opened up as the company goes international in an attempt to basically drum up more business. I mean, that feels like a risky move if you were struggling to do well already. Also, where would you then get all that money to open all those locations internationally? But still, it's a cool idea if you can suspend your disbelief when it comes to the actual business side of that. I mean, maybe they were just like, hey, you can open a Freddy's in your place, just like you have to invest all the money. And then I guess it's a good idea. Either way, it's still a cool idea if you can kind of suspend your disbelief when it comes to perhaps the actual business side of that. The other interesting info we are given is an idea of the animatronic roster, including a new animatronic named Jammy Jr., who just, I really want it to be a cannibalistic Jammy Dodger animatronic. I know that's asking a lot, and I know that we'll probably never get this game, but if that could be a thing, I would love it. Number six, Animator's Hell. This one has a few demos available, but that's it if you're looking to play. It's by Gestalt Games and can be found on Game Jolt if you're looking to check out what is available at this point. The good news is the second demo came out only a few weeks ago. The bad news is that the previous demo came out a year ago, so progress is evidently slow going and it might mean you have to wait a while before you'll see another demo or even a semi-finished full game when it comes to Animator's Hell. Animator's Hell was tested out on Game Theory Live though, so if you are a fan of MatPat who had nothing but good things to say it seems, you might want to hit 
follow on Game Jolt for this one, and stay tuned for when this game is fully released. Either way, you've got a couple of playable demos that you can do, and that's more than a lot of games have, so you should check that out. Seems like the demos are pretty fun. I haven't played this one, but it looks pretty fun. Number five, Pyro Illusion. I guess a lot of these titles choose to be in all caps to, I don't know, attract your eye. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but there are a lot of FNAF titles that are like all in caps. But before Pyro Illusion was Pyro Illusion, in all caps. It was Five Nights at Roxy's. This game has over 20,000 followers, but still doesn't have much beyond preview images and trailers. Of course, all the imagery and glimpses into the world and character design thus far look so good that everyone obviously cannot wait for this game to be released, if it ever does get released. When it gets released? D. Demku has been working on the game for four years on Game Jolt, it should be noted, so hopefully they're getting close soon because, you know, Fans have been waiting for a while. Give us the game, we wanna play! But also respect to people making games because it's really hard work. So also take your time. Give it to us, but take your time. But give it to us, you know? Number four, Pop Goes Evergreen. Pop Goes is one of the games that is part of the FNAF Fanverse initiative. And when I say games, I should really be saying the franchise? Because Pop Goes has had full games released under the title, but they're now working within the fanverse, which means some of the previous titles will no longer be considered canon. But this game, Pop Goes Evergreen, and the prequel game, Pop Goes Arcade, will be considered canon in the FNAF fanverse, so yay. Pop Goes' main character is an animatronic weasel, and while Evergreen is still in development, Arcade is available for you to play if you want to gear up for this exciting new title that will be canon within the FNAF fan extended universe. Exciting stuff! Their page on Game Jolt also has a free soundtrack song available for download that makes for some pretty good creepy mood music. Pop Goes Evergreen is being created by Kane Carter, so thanks Kane. Number 3, Five Nights at Candy's 4. This title isn't even fully finished yet. FNAF 4 is currently listed as just that with the words working title following it in brackets. Five Nights at Candy's 4 is also created by Emil Ace Mako, the same creator behind the previous Candy's game within this franchise. And honestly, although there isn't much up for this game yet, it looks like one of the most scary ones to have come from this series. Five Nights at Candy's is also being welcomed into the FNAF fanverse, so we can also expect to see these games making their way to consoles and mobiles soon. Ace has promised that this game will center more on candy than on the rat, and will deliver tons more minigames because obviously minigames are the best. FNAF 4 seems to have been worked on for about a year, so while it's currently unreleased, odds are good we can at least expect to see this one at some point in the near future. Yay! Also, I feel like if you're part of the fanverse, then that's a good sign. Number two, Sinister Turmoil. Sinister Turmoil was a highly anticipated FNAF fan game that ended up being canceled. Wah, wah, wah. However, the good news is there is a smaller version of the game available for fans to play that was released as kind of a, a final farewell to the project. What's really sad too is this game actually looks so good, so terrifying, and it was only in development for about a year and change before it was abandoned. So they didn't have that much time to create some Thing that was already looking so promising, and yet they did that. Here's hoping that we see more content like this from Angus Games and their team in the future, and that we'll get something else FNAF themed from them, hopefully. The other thing that I love about this one is that it had a more mature rating in comparison to other FNAF fan-made games. So if you were looking for something that's like a little bit more adult in terms of the, the violence or the content, then this is a game that was trying to do that, which I appreciate as an adult <laughs> that likes these games. Number one, Pork Chops Horror Show. This game is a FNAF inspired fan game with a very different premise from what I'm used to with these fan-made games. In Pork Chop's Horror Show, you play as a contestant looking to earn money and fame as you attempt to escape a maze-like, what appears to be, asylum? Filled with death traps, while Pork Chop attempts to hunt you down and kill you after tormenting you first. It's apparently not going to be an easy kill. That's that's what the description promises. Pork Chop's Horror Show was, I believe, cancelled, but is currently uncancelled and maybe still in development. It is being created by Fiznom on Game Jolt and has been in development since 2018. So, hopefully it's uncancelled and we'll see it soon. 
2018. It's been a while. And a 10 FNAF 3. While FNAF 3 isn't the scariest game, since the main jump scare isn't really a jump scare, more like a slow scare, the rest of the jump scares, thanks to the Phantom Animatronics, are something that can actually catch you off guard if you're not paying attention, and then can send you into a panic, causing you to freak out and make even more mistakes, resulting in the game becoming actually stressful. But as long as you make Springtrap run between a couple rooms, you'll be okay. With the Phantoms, though, if you know what to look out for when the jump scares are coming, you'll be fine. At EVR, however, was not fine, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. After he himself described his look after this game as a stepped on Cheeto with hairs on it. And to be fair, the game is scarier in FNAF VR than it is in a normal FNAF 3. So in VR, it's, it's definitely better and makes more sense as to why it's here. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you might as well play it in VR. And you're not having fun with plush babies. I hate the plush baby minigame, okay? It's the freaking worst game out of all of FNAF VR. Having to search around the room for little Chucky dolls coming at you and then you have to catch them before they reach you, I hate that. My mother is absolutely horrified of Chucky and she hates possessed dolls. And while I don't have as severe a creep factor about them, I still don't want to deal with anything that's possessed. And while possession I don't personally believe is, is real in real life, a killer doll is a killer doll. And honestly, it's nothing to be trifled with. You don't mess with killer dolls and it's not even like you find this amount of characters and you're good. No, no, no. You have to survive until 6 a.m., which is 8 minutes and 55 seconds if it goes by the classic FNAF night timer, with the first hour lasting 90 seconds and each subsequent hour lasting around 111 seconds. Either way, okay, I don't want to spend 10 seconds looking for killer dolls, let alone 555. And today, Vent Repair. The Vent Repair minigames from FNAF VR are probably some of the most intense out of the ones here, especially in Nightmare Mode. Being trapped in this little tiny elevator that's smaller than even the one in my current apartment building, you have to perform a series of puzzles with animatronics right in your face, especially for the Mangle one, which starts you off with Mangle literally right in your face as you turn on the light. And then the entered one just gives you a lot to process, and then a jump scare right in your face when you thought you had just burnt the man to a crisp. The Vent Repair minigames will not help those with claustrophobia or the one that fears animatronics, which I actually totally forget what it's called. Like, what the hell? Like, I can remember that the fear of the Pope is papaphobia because it basically calls the Pope daddy, but I can't remember what, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, oh, um, yeah, yeah, uh, auto, automatonophobia is the fear of human-like figures, such as animatronics, and anthropomorphophobia is the fear of giving human characteristics to non-human objects, such as robots or animals, for instance. And it's seven sister location. Sister location, while being one of the most popular FNAF games, is probably also one of the scariest. Since the whole vibe is like, and it's it's new in this game. It's not the classic survive until 6 a.m. thing like we've been seeing. This time, there's a story. There's a chance for multiple endings, but this time there is a solid story that we can grip onto and get invested in. In no other game have we had an animatronic betray us like this. They've always been our enemy first and only, but this time we thought one was on our side. Add to that the fact that this is also the game where we learned that we're a robot and can't die, and it's revealed that William is still alive, that we're his son, and that Elizabeth is our sister who ends up possessing baby, and you have a whole lot to take in. Plus, not to mention the VR fan-made version of this game YouTubers like Eddie VR have played, because those are even worse. Because again, it's in virtual reality, instead of just on a flat monitor that you can look away from. Can't really look away from VR, it kind of follows you. And it's six, fun with Plush Trap. Not only is Plush Trap one of the scariest little buggers there is in FNAF, in, in the fun with Plush Trap minigame, your goal is to literally get him close to you and stop him on a red X. Why? Like, I, I don't know. I guess because, like, it's a dream. Nothing really needs to make sense. But either way, this game is freaking terrifying. <laughs> Since you have to willingly let Plush Trap get closer and closer to you by having the lights turned off. Having to listen to scuttling in order to know when he's actually moving, which is absolutely freaking terrifying. Like, why the absolute living hell would you do this willingly? And I, I'm saying, like, fun with Plush Trap instead of fun with Balloon Boy, okay? Because Plush Trap is just a straight up creepy animatronic. Like, for real. This guy is like a, a rabid rabbit, okay, on illicit substances that have something to do with baths, okay, and sodium. This guy will eat your face. However, Balloon Boy, on the other hand, just seems like he's, like, he, while he does have his own version of the minigame, like, he's scarier than normal Balloon Boy, but he just makes me think that he's, like, some little kid on the playground who's trying to intimidate an adult or something. Like, like this guy can't really do anything. And if he tries anything, I'll just kick him. But not Plush Trap. Plush Trap, that's, that's messed up. Halfway through into number five, FNAF World. FNAF World isn't scary, you're probably thinking, as you aim to either skip this number or click off the video. However, trust me when I say that the sheer horror this game will cause is greater than any other FNAF game because of how bad it is. Okay, don't get me wrong. 
I don't want to be scared. I hate being scared. I think it's a bad thing. And that when you are scared, it means that there's something wrong and that you're in danger. I don't understand people who like to be scared. But this game is scary bad, so I'm putting it on this list. It's Halloween, trick and treat, right? Here's the trick of the list. You're welcome. We gotta have some fun with all the spook, right? Well, maybe FNAF is a scary series, but when games are scary because they're bad, that's longer lasting than any jump scare or psychological horror you can think of. I mean, this is certainly a short number, but you have to admit, you have to admit, you were hoping this would be on the list. And if I put it any higher than number five, you have all been mad at me because there are actually scary games in this series, so. Let's move on. And at 4, Night Terrors. The Night Terrors from FNAF VR are in essence a dumbed down version of FNAF 4. With a singular enemy coming from the different sides and in some cases a different mini game in the same sort of setting. Plush Trap is a dark room, but these are, these are Night Terrors. The other ones include Nightmare On, which involves the most horrifying tentacle video I've ever seen along with the classic FNAF 4 doors mechanic. Circus Baby, who has you hiding in the closet longer than my sister was. Fun Time Freddy, who's basically just James Charles. And then there's Nightmare Fred Bear, which I have to say is probably the most horrifying character to face in VR. I mean, why the absolute hell would I want to face what is probably the scariest animatronic in the series? And freaking virtual reality, right in my goddamn face. Like, hell no. There ain't no way in heaven, hell, purgatory, or the empty that this is like, that there's no way I'm doing it. It's, not, it's the most ridiculous bull that I have ever seen. And there's no damn way that I am letting myself deal with it. Hell no. Getting close to the end, in number three, hallway. Now getting into the FNAF VR DLC, which is nothing more than a festive holiday add-on with no hidden intent or purpose, is the epitome of FNAF horror. Especially with a game like The Hallway, which is probably the hardest minigame in the whole DLC. The minigame revolves around walking down a hallway, and while that may not sound like the scariest thing, this hallway is filled with the nightmare animatronics we see in FNAF 4. Complete with Bonnie and Chica on their respective sides, opening and closing doors that you need to avoid when open, and Foxy, who will appear at random times in front of you, running at you and jumping scaring you and ending the game if you move while the lightning flashes. Which makes this very difficult if you're trapped near a door that starts opening, because you need to move, but then the lightning flashes and Foxy's head, you get it. And if that's not enough for you, when you make it halfway down the hall, if you make it halfway down the hall, without getting killed, a door opens behind you, way at the beginning of the hall, and reveals Nightmare Freddy, who starts walking towards you Michael Myers style, not stopping for any reason. And if he catches you, you're dead, son. That's what makes this game so difficult. You need to keep moving to avoid Freddy, but then you have to stop multiple times due to other reasons. Due to Foxy who's standing in front of you or because there's doors that are opening on either side. It's not a pleasant experience. And ultimately, in number two, Corn Maze. The Corn Maze minigame from FNAF VR Curse of Dreadbear is probably the most disturbing game there is in Curse of Dreadbear. Where the hallway is definitely the scariest, Corn Maze is the most intense, at least if you're going for the secret ending with the Vanny mask and all five keys. The secret ending is the hardest to get, with you needing to collect the four colored keys, red, green, blue, yellow, and and then finding a fifth secret brown and purple glitching key that can spawn anywhere on the map. And the only indication you get as to where it could be are a couple of buildings. That's it. So if you're looking for the key, you better be paying attention. And not only that, but Foxy is also stalking you the whole time. He knows exactly where you are, and the only way to be rid of him, even temporarily, is to send him running at you, okay? He has to see you, he has to charge at you, then you have to hide behind a cardboard cutout before he catches you. This will cause him to be put somewhere else on the map, but he still knows where you are. So he will make his way back, causing this whole process to repeat. And not to mention, the goddamn clusters of crows on the mother yucking ground, okay? Which are definitely the scariest part of the minigame. And I'm not even joking, I hate them. Like, you'll just be walking, you'll be like, oh my god, there's a key. Foxy's not around, let's go for it. Boom, crows, they alert Foxy to where you are, so he makes a beeline for you, and then you're so, then you've Already, your pants are brown now. It doesn't matter what color they were before, they're brown now because of some goddamn crows. Finally, in a number one, FNAF 4. FNAF 4 is probably the scariest FNAF game, and for good reason. This is where the series came back after FNAF 3 received less than favorable reviews after the Springtrap jump scare wasn't that scary. FNAF 3 was supposed to be the final game according to an interview with Scott, however, the community's outcry over the jump scare led to Scott making a game that would scare the living daylights out of everyone. FNAF 4. With the game revolving around listening to little sounds, it's a miracle that any 
anyone was able to complete it. Ask our editor Tessa. You tried it and couldn't get past the second night from what I remember her telling me. The issue is you have to listen, okay? And having to listen, especially with the jump scares, it makes them worse. Since the actual scare of the jump scare comes with the sound that plays it, not the thing that flashes on your screen. So, if you're focused on hearing sound, the actual scare will hit you harder than most others because of the sound. This is also where the fun with Plush Trap and the Night Terror minigames originated in a way. So, with multiple other things on this list being included in this game, it's safe to say that it is probably the scariest FNAF game. Especially lore-wise, because apparently nobody has figured it out yet. But Scott hasn't seen my videos, so I might have. Number 10, Five Nights at Candy's. Five Nights at Candy's is another big FNAF fan game franchise. And this first one was simply the beginning of this spin-off franchise. Like some other games, Five Nights at Candy's also makes mention of Freddy's Pizza. But in this game, the restaurant no longer remains competitive because it's already been shut down. The design for candies and these animatronics also remains pretty frightening. Although I will say, I think overall FNAF is more scary if we're just talking about the first candies game at least. The main characters at candies are cat animatronics Cindy and Candy, but they also have lots of other disturbing and in some cases bizarrely cute friends join them. Like some of these animatronics are nightmare fuel and then other ones I'm like, I kind of want to like be friends with that animatronic. No. Number 9, Five Nights at Flumpty's 2. I think one of the best things about Five Nights at Flumpty's overall is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. But the other thing that is really amazing about it is it's actually scary as well. It's like a parody game that will make you chuckle but will also haunt your nightmares at the same time. While the original game was more in the vein of Five Nights at Freddy's in terms of its formula, Flumpty's 2 pushes the envelope even more, resulting in a more weird and horrifying experience for players in comparison to that first game. Just look at the room you start in after all, like what is even happening here? I'm not exactly sure about everything that's going on, but I definitely know it's not good. I also just think the mechanics in the game really add to the level of paranoia you feel while playing. Like the laptop restart, which you have to go through every time you fully exhaust your laptop battery while looking at the security monitors. So don't do that. Don't let your laptop die. Also, it's not good for your laptop. Real, real facts though. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn about more scary FNAF fan games, you know that there are so many. There are so many we could talk about. So be sure to let us know that you love it by giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, Pop Goes. Pop Goes has a new game that should be coming out with the FNAF extended universe with the FNAF fanverse initiative. But while you wait, Pop Goes and Pop Goes Arcade are still available to play. I believe Pop Goes is where it all started and it's a game created in the style of FNAF where you work at Pop Goes Pizzeria as a nighttime security guard. Pop Goes' main animatronic, you guessed it, is a weasel. A creepy weasel that throughout the night will sneak away to grab animatronic parts so that he can build his own horrifying creation. The game also features a panic meter which you have to keep low by looking out the window. Ah, so relaxing looking out the window. Watching the panic meter increase is enough to make me actually panic in this game. Number 7, Pork Chops Horror Show. Pork Chops Horror Show is an unreleased FNAF fan game where players attempt to survive a horror game show, risking their lives in exchange for the chance at winning fabulous money and prizes. The overall design of this game and characters look mm, pretty terrifying, which is why despite it not being released yet, many fans of the FNAF franchise were still excited to see and play it. Of course, it has been in development for a long time and has even been cancelled at least once, only for the promise of it to return to us, those of us who are eagerly awaiting its release. If it is ever released, it will be a combination of point and click mechanics and free roam. Until it does, we only have the stills, preview, and promise of it to keep us going. However, it is also part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. Scott Cawthon announced on Reddit that its developer Fiznom would be bringing an original reimagining of FNAF to the FNAF verse. Although this game wasn't necessarily listed, a lot of us are like, that's got to be Pork Chops Horror Show. So who knows? It could still end up happening. Keep those fingers crossed, my friends. Number six, Those Nights at Rachel's. Is this game just a better FNAF game? In my opinion, sort of. In this game, you are a security guard at Rachel's where you must try to survive through the entire night shift and prevent the animatronics from attacking you. The game was made in Unreal Engine by the popular and accomplished FNAF fan game designer extraordinaire Nick Som, who also designed another horrifying FNAF fan game you may have heard of, The Joy of Creation, and others within that series. So yeah, that's the level we're at with this. Some of the animatronics featured in Those Nights at Rachel's I actually find more horrifying to gaze upon in comparison to the core animatronics from Five Nights at Freddy's. The other thing I love about this game in terms of the horror elements when it comes to the game's story is that it actually takes place in the same world as FNAF. At least in the story it's mentioned. Freddy's is mentioned as being a problematic restaurant down the street whose controversies and scandals
scandals are actually negatively impacting Doug's and Rachel's business as well. Good old Doug's and Rachel's. Number five, Five Nights at Candy's Four. Because in the world of FNAF fan games, some of these games have become so popular, they've even created their own series of games. There is just a very real demand for really good FNAF fan games. And Five Nights at Candy's was one of the breakouts when it came to being considered one of the best. Despite the fact that I ranked the first game in the series a little bit lower on this list, it's only because each game has really only improved on the creep factor here. FNAF 4 is not released yet, but appears just from the stills and the teasers on its game jolt page to be one of the most terrifying in that series yet. Five Nights at Candy's has also been welcomed into the FNAF extended universe by Scott Cawthon himself, joining the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. Number 4, Final Nights 3, Nightmares Awaken. I think this one deserves to be so high up just for like the game's location. It takes place at a hospital and you must try to survive and somehow, somehow sleep while also dealing with Reaper animatronics, which is about as scary as you can imagine. Also, hospitals in general are just scary. In fact, it actually might not even be scarier than you're imagining if you haven't played this game before, so you need to go play it. Something as well about the idea of sleeping while all this madness is going on just breaks my brain in a way. Like, I don't want to sleep if there are things hiding in my closet. I don't want to do that. How am I supposed to sleep knowing that these reapers are out there wanting to probably tear me apart? And every time I wake up, I'm probably going to get die. That's what's about to happen. I'm like, I can't sleep. Number three, The Joy of Creation. The Joy of Creation is the game that started it all for this franchise. It was inspired by Boogeyman and FNAF 4. Here you play as Scott Cawthon himself, fending off animatronics who seem to be attempting to scare and threaten you to encourage you, I guess, to make even more animatronics or even more games. The Joy of Creation has some very disturbing designs when it comes to the animatronics. And although the game is simple, it's very well put together. The character of Scott in this game also seems to be a bit like William in the sense that he also apparently has animatronics and is warned at the beginning of the game that if he doesn't replace the mainframes on his animatronics, they're going to be like a danger to those that they perform for. So he seems to also be a builder of animatronics. This game, I believe, was only ever developed as a demo before it was abandoned. But if you love it and you find it as terrifying as I do, you can check out the finished and remastered version, The Joy of Creation Reborn. Number two, Five Nights at Treasure Island. Five Nights at Treasure Island was possibly one of the first fan games ever made based off of the FNAF franchise. And I gotta say, it's a pretty good one. It still holds up to this day. This one blended together the mechanics of FNAF with the oh-so-cursed world of Disney. At least we all like to imagine the world of Disney is cursed. I don't know how, how cursed it is in real life. In Five Nights at Treasure Island, you face off against animatronics at Old Treasure Island, which are Disney icons, including Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy, or really messed up versions of them. Another interesting and disturbing part of Treasure Island is that the animatronics, or tunes in this case, are all super twisted in some way. Honestly, in retrospect, this game reminds me now of a combination of Bendy and the Ink Machine mixed with FNAF. Number one, The Joy of Creation Story Mode. I feel like The Joy of Creation is elements of FNAF 4, but if it was, like, maybe even scarier. This fan game is meant to be a follow-up that goes through what happens after Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Now, of course, this is a fan game, so none of this is really considered canon, but it does a great job of encapsulating the feel of the FNAF universe and the lore, which is why a lot of fans will sometimes even consider it as part of the world when reflecting on certain characters and certain stories. It just fits so well. What makes it scary? The sound design, the whole atmosphere, the creepy story, the animatronics. I mean, it's really got the whole package, which is why it's number one. Thank you